All right, let's hop in for day two of the weekly challenge. I am here with the robots playing a non-best hand tournament. And um, we're scoring imp style. So having two good games on the scorecard is usually a good sign. But again, not necessarily meaning we're doing anything great. We did normal stuff so far. And we're going to continue to do that by opening just one heart with this hand. Pass a no trump. Nothing to do but rebid your heart. Show your six card suit. Ooh, this is cool. So let's talk about this and let's look at that camera there as well. There we are back on screen here. This is a situation where what I expect to see in dummy is a limit raise with three card support. And what's happened here is partners gone through the forcing one no trump bid. And then when we rebid our hearts, they jumped to four hearts. So this is exactly how we would show a limit raise with three. If partner is going to be rebidding their suit instead of just raising a three, which could be two card support, we differentiate this by jumping to four, which is usually good, especially in imp format. We're happy to get there. And there is that honestly wow we're lucky partner should have game forced with this hand this is too good for a limit raise with three um this would just be a two club game force and then a quick quick arrival to four hearts to show this sort of hand uh i'm not mad on them though this is a good spot and uh it's an interesting lead they're making. We, it's 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 not terrible for us that they've led this because we're going to have a little bit of time. The diamond position is a little threatened, um, and I need to take a heart finesse. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to hope this survives. Uh, it usually doesn't with the robots. And uh, there's there's what we we're devastated with the diamond switch. Um, I mean. Interesting. I know this is going to go bad for me, and I usually would play the king just because they might just be trying to bamboozle this through ace, queen, jack, or something like that. Uh, the robots don't usually do this, though, right? And with a human being, I would probably always play the king. With the robots, I might duck it in the hopes that they decide to switch to something that's good for us, or they just forget to patch uh, or cash the diamond. Yeah. I mean, I, this is a terrible play, but I'm going to make it just for last ditch desperation, robot style, and of course. It did not work. They had their tricks, and now they're going to cash a spade. Yuck. Mm. We could have, we could have, of course, played um, the clubs directly, right? We could have played ace, king, queen of clubs, and we could have pitched away a loser very quickly. However, that wasn't going to work amazingly well for us uh, because we, we're, we're going to pitch. You know, I'll, I'll show you in a second. I'll show you what our, our choices are in these spots. Um, but here, I'm just going to start taking my tricks if i have an extra one i'll take it if not i'm not going to take it that spade is uh, going to be a loser regardless uh, and that's just minus two so so let me jump over and just show you uh what i'm talking about in this one so so here um after this queen of spades lead right my my choice is i can plunk down the ace of clubs cross over to the king and pitch a diamond away on the club and and that is going to work but only if it's three three right that the clubs literally have to break three three or i'm going to be doing a loser on loser play and if they're breaking three three i might as well take a heart finesse and if it wins now i just play clubs and they're breaking three three and i get a bunch of pitches so here on this on this lead you could see that you know i could certainly be successful if i just play a heart to my ace right because the king of hearts is falling and now now I have an embarrassment of riches when I notice when I cash my ace of clubs, he shows out. And, and now I just get to take a club finesse for an extra pitch. But as soon as I just take a finesse, I am down, right? And I'm supposed to be down three. They only nipped me two, unfortunately, on this one. But I think at the end, I, I do think that they pitch a spade behind me uh, when I pitch the ten of spades. No, okay. So watch this. I think I had a chance here because the spade was just good. Yeah. So I, I don't need to pitch. Uh, I, I can actually rough this and cash a spade. I certainly was not paying attention at that point. I, I went a minus an extra trick, but notice once I lose that heart finesse, the hand is over. Do I do I kick myself in this situation? Do I say, oh man, how did I not drop the king of hearts? Of course not. Of course not. Don't worry. When this happens to you, you're never guessing that. That's just going to happen. You're always supposed to take a heart finesse here, right? There's no reason that told you otherwise, so you take it. Just because it loses the singleton king, think about the mathematical possibilities of that particular holding happening. It's so minuscule that you don't cater to it ever, right? You cater to the king being onside, which is way more likely. And if it's offside, it's way more likely to be more than one, so there's nothing you're going to do to capture that, right? So just, think, just because you had a nice windfall that could have happened here doesn't mean you necessarily did anything terribly wrong. 
wrong, right? And the rest of the wrong was just not uh, paying attention to the cards that were being played. Okay, one diamond pass, one spade to us. What do we do? Well, easy choice here. We're out of this auction. We have nothing to say, and we'll just sit back and watch what they do. Now it's gone three spades, four spades. Interesting. What should you be thinking just in general before you lead, folks? Yeah, just, just think about what's happening and where the strength is, right, to decide what your lead's going to be. We know the strength is, is in the left-hand opponent's hand here, right? And that's because they've opened one diamond and then they've jumped to three spades. That's about 16 to 18 points if you're not... Uh, uh, that's exactly what they're showing, 16 to 18. And we should also know that East bit a game, so East-West are likely to have around 26 points, and we have 10, which means we're very likely defending this hand alone, right? We're not going to have much to do. So what's the best choice here? Well, this is interesting. I would tend to just be passive in these situations usually, and that would mean leading a club or um, maybe even leading a trump in this spot if I was worried about uh, them roughing on each side. And, and that's something that I'm okay to do here. I'm actually going to leave the ace of spades because I want to draw a couple rounds of trump, and I don't think it's going to make a huge difference because, again, the opponents have most of the strength, especially in this suit. What I'm trying to do is keep both sides from roughing as, as much as I possibly can, right? If they're 4-4, four, four, we might be able to. So here, they have to draw three rounds of trump. Now we've kind of given them one rough in each hand, which, to be fair, might be more than enough for them to take a bunch of tricks. But here, I don't see us really developing any tricks and suits outside of this. And in fact, I'm much happier to have them be leading towards my positions here. And, oh, wow, look. Uh, Righty has ace, nine, eight, fourth of diamonds, so they're going to be able to finesse this position, it looks like. Let's make them get back to their hand, though. All right, now we know we can duck because we know the position here. And here it goes, ace, and now low diamond towards that, and they've, they've solved this. Unfortunate. We could have hopped heart and led back, or hopped diamond and led back, but now it's the same situation. They set up diamonds and then they have a heart entry. And here they have one pitch on that, which they'll jettison their heart. And now it looks like it's going to go rough or rough unless they had more hearts. Oh, okay. So, was there anything we could do on this? I don't think so, right? The heart finesse is just winning if they needed to take it. And that was about all we could do on this. Let's hop over and take a quick peek, real quick, at the results screen before we take a sneak preview into what's happening next week, right? So here, uh, opening lead choice. Again, I, I was probably going to either lead a club or a spade. Looks like a diamond is amazing, but only because partners void. <laughs> that would have been awesome, folks, if we found that one. But it seems like a massive risk, especially with lefty opening diamonds. We're leading into the strength of that position with king fourth. I mean, yeah, partner might be short. But it seems, uh, it seems like a heck of a position to guess. If you did lead a diamond, it's going to go diamond rough. We're going to eventually, they're going to lead a spade at some point. We're going to hop ace and lead another diamond for them to rough. And we still get the king of diamonds, which is amazing. Right? They have to take that finesse no matter what because they don't have any way to pitch it. They're mirrored up in the heart suit. All right, let's look at where we're going to jump off on board five here. And that is right here on this screen. Interesting. One diamond opened on our right, and we have this hand. This will be exciting. I'll be back here for it tomorrow, folks. And don't forget, lots of stuff at bridgelesson.com for you this week. The random full game quiz is on Wednesday, which is one of the most popular quizzes. It's longer than usual. More questions, more answers, more experience in that course. One of the best courses I have on uh, in, in the live portion of the programs. And we have two decisions courses again this week. We have declared decisions and defense decisions all around the contract of One No Trump, which is one of the meatiest contracts to talk about play and defense because there's a lot of things going on on both sides of the table. So check those out. Links are in the uh, description of this. I'll see you either in those classes or right back here for day three of this weekly challenge with the robots. Let's dance with this one tomorrow, folks. See you then.